Well, hello there. Hey, hi. It's, it's yeah. this time again. Uh, it's been a while, though. No, it's MoCast, man, but it is yeah. the Breaking Wow yes. special edition because, you know, it. we had to get it. the voice right in back into the chat because, man, since the last time, we were kind of anticipating the uh, expansion announcement and that happened uh. and a lot more news uh, with that came along uh, in between all of these weeks. And I don't know if we can honestly... It must have been at least it. a month, right? Um, not sure. Could be because we because we had like two of ours, then yeah. the unholy, and then I think a week pause. So then we talked, the, but who cares? The, yeah. the the important thing is we're once again it's together important. with with Guiltyus, with Public, with Mandel, Pantia, and Word Up to chat about everything that's everything within World of Warcraft. And I guess it's a good start to uh, to just go into uh, the Dragonflight business. Um, just gonna ask. I well, know I, I always have Guiltius right right beside us here, so is he gonna be the first on the list here to hear this? So Guiltius, out of all of the news that came out, you know the interviews, the uh, revealed and whatnot, what excited you the most, and what are your biggest worries or worry? Uh, it's the same thing probably. Um, I think talents are potentially yeah. uh, a significant improvement <laughs> on yeah. how the current function for a variety of reasons, but I also think they're probably the. They're the only real thing that can flop and blow up the entire expansion from like a systems and a how things function point of view. So that's uh, that'll be interesting. I mean, uh, I think I'm not sure, but everybody's gonna get their their uh, roundup here. Uh, I'm, but I'm guessing that everybody will talk about the the talent situation a little bit. Well, okay, public. What about you, man? Yeah, I, I mean, we don't have a whole lot else to be honest with you, right? Like, all we really know yeah. is there's a new zone, a new class slash race, and then the talent tree. Those are like the big, like that's it, right? They haven't talked about raids or dungeons yet. They haven't really said if there's any other new systems. They've said a lot of what's not coming. So like. Covenants, for example, aren't coming in the same iteration. They're kind of reworking reputation. So it sounds like they've been listening. My struggle with that is I thought the same thing. And then we've gotten the last two tiers, which has kind of proven me wrong a little bit. So on one hand, I'm like excited. On the other hand, I'm a little terrified. Like what they've yeah. shown for talents is probably exactly what the game needs. Like realistically speaking, like almost every class in spec has problems with their current talent tree. Everyone, this is, this is a well-known thing. And I think with the new talent tree, they can probably solve a lot of issues with, you know, utility balancing um, uh, and just making specs feel like fun and engaging again, especially if they put good things in these talent trees. Um, they could also really, like massively screw it up um, and it could be a, a giant pain in the ass for every player and it could be really overwhelming to any new player. Um, if you just look at that image, it looks and you if it yeah. looks insane. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is not easy to read, and there's a lot going on. Um, yeah. So that's kind of my fear is that it might be too much, um, especially for the base of a system that they said they want this to last for several expansions. Right? They don't want to like keep reinventing talents every expansion. They would like to. I didn't really say if they would like add new rows or new options, but they kind of implied that, yeah, we're going to be expanding this not just in Dragonflight, but in two, three expansions afterwards. And it's well, kind of it a big like, system already. <laughs> on that one, I read it way more like it's just going to be like similar to the old trees where it's not like it necessarily gets added to. They just rejig it each expansion yeah to like you know I, yeah i could also get, see get rid of the holes. certain options that give more than one like you can choose between like convoke or something else or whatever like those dual point options they could just add more of those i can give a lot of like room for the the original image that they showed for it uh it lacks a lot of visual clarity but i think that's probably just a case of you know, it's a work in progress. It's their first iteration of like how sure. we want to visualize it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that that's, could be improved. The, definitely, but that's a very a lot, a lot going on straight away in your face. Yeah, the, definitely for presentation purposes, they had to show something in in conjunction with the actual announcement that hey, we're going back to the old talent. So, what about you, Mandel? And I'm expecting some some dragon riding talking here. Unfortunately, <laughs> well, <laughs> kind of not really because they've like. One of the things I was the most concerned about was actually the the new uh, cast and hold mechanic. 
that they showcased with the Volker, but that got very clearly yeah. um, described by Ga- by Gaiazel and later by I can't remember if it was Nimox. It's somewhere on the the community council where they mentioned that there would be a uh, basically a way to toggle rather than hold in order to yeah. solve that, which is a godsend for accessibility, basically. I share public's worries and hopes on the talent trees, but I'm more worried than hopeful, considering the feedback that we've had, again, on the community council stuff, about their intention to move some of the spells that we already currently have, even stuff as baseline and as simple as kicks, as a basically a node on the talent tree. And this is particularly bad because already most people, like casual people, already struggle to use that utility properly. And there is no real feedback in the game that tells you or rewards you for using it properly unless you're a demon hunter. So those nodes, I, in my opinion, if they get put like this, will be systematically skipped by people until they get for it or rather yeah. for not having it. I have a lot, like, personally about it, but, like, to just piggyback on that one in particular, it also is going to lead pretty clearly to, like, you're going to get Mythic Plus groups where, as an example, someone goes in and then they ask, why didn't you kick this thing? And they go, oh, well, I didn't take a kick because I didn't know I needed it. And then everyone's going to turn around and flame that person because it's not signposted. And that is a super dangerous precedent to allow it to even be possible. Yep. There's also the problem of encounter design on that one, where, for instance, even in Mythic Plus, we have bosses like Mistcaller, where the tank has to kick. There is no other option outside of exploiting. And if they don't kick, it's a wipe, basically. So it forces the tank, in this case, to know ahead of time that there is a mandatory kick that they have to perform in that dungeon. And they will yeah, get flamed if, they, I, if that doesn't happen. I think that's I think actually that's... fine, though. Like, you have to... On some level, you need to punish the player for making a wrong mistake at, at a yes. certain point. And I, I would argue choosing the right utility is like key to playing the game. And I, and I think in this case, that's actually fine, especially when potentially, we don't know, right? Your healers can now talent into kicking. Um, all of them, not just shamans. Like that's that's massive, right? But I, 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 share, I, I share the no. concern at a general level, right? Because like, what if they put power infusion in the shared priest tree? No, right. it's. Uh, yeah. I, th- I think you've misunderstood me on that one. Like that mechanic in particular, only one person can kick. Only the target of the the spell can actually kick it. Oh, sure. I but do that's, think that's that's the encounter design, right? They can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the the worry is encounter design not following suit, basically. Sure. And in my opinion, on that one, for stuff as mandatory as kicks, there for classes that already have it, it should still be baseline, and there should be an option in the talent tree to amplify it. So, like, take for and instance the Demon Hunter Reasons. We do know. We, 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 do. Know. we do know. It's in the Community Council stuff. I, I would much rather see, instead of that, it, 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 there is a there's a direct part of the path that you have to go through. And that could be a flavor of, do you want Solar Beam or Skull Bash? Or do you want this type of interrupt or that type of interrupt? But you have to go through it and you have to take one of them. I mean... Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think there is value in being able to make a mistake, even if it's a big mistake. Um, I think a lot of, like, this is somewhat an encounter design problem, somewhat a talent design problem. But, like, for, to use your tank example, if you're putting it in a situation whereby on a, on a naturally path route, tanks are only having to, like, spec one point out of their way in order to get an interrupt, then I, th- I think that's fine. Because if it's a one point cost, it's like wild charge. Wild Charge is going to be a one-point cost for, for any druid spec, no matter where they are in the tree. Like, maybe move talent points more towards that. But I think it is fine to be able to choose to opt out of that and to be able to make that mistake. As long as it's like... As long as there's something that's pointing you towards taking that that talent, be it because it's super accessible to you or or some something else, some tutorial type system, I think it's fine to be able to make that mistake. Yeah, as long as that is met, then yeah. But I'd, I'd much rather be in favor of word up suggestion, where for instance, you get a choice between Skull Bash and Solar Beam. Because both of those fulfill the same basic idea, but one of them is much more powerful, but a much more lengthy cooldown. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's one I mean, of these cases maybe. where it's different flavors with different niches, where they still fulfill the same 
thing at the core. And they've mentioned that they were choice nodes on the talent tree, so it's not even impossible for it to happen. It's a hard argument, right? Because a lot of this plays yep. on design, and their current design spaces have been um, like restricted based on what utility options people have available to them. And they have to yep. kind of genericize that in Mythic Plus because you have five people, whereas in Mythic Raid, they can balance around, oh, you'll probably have a Warlock, so we can assume you have a gateway for this, right? Yep. In, in this new system, if they give us more interesting utility choices, they can theoretically expand that design space. And, and what I mean by that is say that there could be a dungeon that has very little kicking in it at all. And maybe it's a way more about mob control. So then you talent yep. into something else, right? They, they could, and I guess like in my opinion is that I'd rather them live in that space than, you know, a space where dungeons have too many kicks. Yeah, um, then they need to actually go through and tune and counter design to be in that direction. Because right now it's going in the opposite yeah. direction with Tazavesh. And that's always going to be the case, right? We've, we've always yeah. had this problem and you know, it's not fun living in a place where you kind of assume they're going to fuck it up. Um, but, I'd rather live in, at least for now, until I'm proven wrong, I'll, I'll live in a space where they can build around this, but yeah. I, mean, I guess we'll see. Especially with the first season we of Dungeons, at least, we know are going to be four new and four old, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, yes. But so, like if we look back at Mop or Wod or whatever Dungeons, there's significantly less of these kind of mechanics that that's true about. Yeah. yeah that's true yeah which is a really good thing by the way like a yeah. mix like this where you you can pick and mix is much better than a case like today where every dungeon you need three or four melee basically oh for sure but but guys think... we forgot about pantheon pantheon what <laughs> what what do you think about the dragonfly now what, what is the biggest thing and then you can talk about your toxic toxic solution for the kick on the talent tree <laughs> as well uh, well, for Dragonfly, for me, like my biggest thing is going to be like the professions. So I think that's quite cool on yeah. how they're allowing kind of bind on pickup items to be purchased by other people. And they that's also cool. mentioned that the creation catalyst system could be expanded into that as well. Yes, yes. So yep. you could potentially get tier via crafters at an expensive cost, request it ahead of time. This is going to make raiding cost even more gold, but hey ho. That's kind of whatever. <laughs> uh, on top of that as well, the, the convenience that, it, that they, they said that you can do work orders with it. Because yes, one of the most annoying cool. things is is having to find the guy like at the moment that you want it after you've got this stuff. If you can just go there and say, I want it once someone comes along and does it. Hey ho, I get it. That's great. I can just send that off and not have to worry about it. That's way more yeah. lenient than the, the current situation where you have to go and search for the person who's got rank six legendary crafting tokens on the server if you're on a dead one. Not I, even the, that. The dead actually. server thing is um is what I'm scared of personally. Yeah. Like it was it's really bad right now. Like my my guild transferred servers uh this last tier because we couldn't afford legendaries anymore. Like it was RGM was the only person on the server that could craft most rank six or whatever oh. the legendary was, right? And he was just like losing so much money leveling stuff up just to make the guild work. Uh, like it was fucking awful, but like with the work yeah. order system, maybe they can make that cross realm. I don't, I don't know. Guilty's I mean, probably heard of the like my woes because my realm is, is truly legitimately empty. Oh, bro, mine is better than yours, just, just <laughs> us. And on, on here, the only reason that we can even do these things is because there's one guy who's a lunatic who went and did it all on his own, right? Um, exactly. And he and Same he has us. a monopoly on the entire server as well. If, I think that making that kind of thing not necessarily cross like region entirely, but more linked, maybe you like batch service together, a la like battle battle groups in crafter things that would alleviate quite a lot of the tensions with really dead servers right now. Or like yeah. if there's no worker orders for a particular item on your realm, you can then see work orders from other realms at like a five percent tax or something. I don't know, like. Yeah. You know, in incentivize you to buy locally, but if you can't, you can import for a charge. <laughs> like, Yo, you know, there's definitely uh, really ways. Like, although that sounds very pipe think... dreamy, because that sounds like it would be really heavily engineering heavy. No, I get working. No. I don't it's think fine. so. I it's... also think that like being able to get loot from more sources than just raid is actually kind of a positive thing. Yep. Totally. See, uh, there's a really interesting thing on that one, which is the optional crafting regions that they've put this tier, and yeah. particularly the avoidance and the speed ones. 
that yeah. are actually insanely valuable in myth- for Mythic Plus players. Like, more of those with even more interesting effects would be really nice, especially if you can target them with work orders. Because, like, in the case of the healer that I run with at the moment for Mythic Plus, he has had to level dual crafting from scratch and get the reagent in order to get an avoidance ring. Like, it is... Right. It's a yeah. bit stupid. The only thing that I don't like about the profession system at the moment, the way it's been pitched, is you gain kind of ranks in the craft yes. that you need to make them more powerful. I despise that so yeah, much. Then I... in alchemy, why would you ever want a low and then max rank yeah. potion or flask? You know? It was the yeah. same thing we had in BFA with like uh, alchemy procs, right? Like you only wanted to go to a max rank crafter, same thing there to get the extra procs of whatever you were making. I think even more so now, because that was just saving you gold. Yeah. Like, sometimes I just dump more gold, because fuck it, I can't be bothered to find a, a rank 3 guy. I'll just yeah. not get procs. Yeah. Whereas this will be it, actual it, power. It, it gatekeeps it a bit to the point where uh, if you need to just spam craft to get that leveling, but no one wants to come to you to make the crafting, then that means that you've just got to pay for it Pick yourself, it deal it yourself. with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the same deal as it. legendaries now, right? Like nobody yeah, yeah. wants to buy a 190 legendary now, but you have to make them in order to be able to make the <laughs> up to date legendaries. And I, I think that's the fear is that we're all there's like a bad taste in our mouth from this expansion on ranks. I feel like yeah, and I don't I, think anyone I, wants to see them again. I don't know if you guys have seen the insane state or if you have the same state on your auction houses as I do, but like the 249 legendaries are worth something because of the new optional crafting region that they added on the Quartermaster. But then the moment you get to rank 2, you have to craft uh, item level 210 legendaries, and then item level 225, and then 235, and those are literally worth 10 gold at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's a and weird system. There needs to be a way system. to scrap the items, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, scrap the item for at least part of the, the cost. It's it, We have this technology from BFA as well. Uh, yeah. Or like, no, why do we even need ranks? I don't know. I don't really like... I agree. I, I don't. I don't I, think it's particularly fun. I'm just not sure, especially when we know that we've been given talent trees for these professions, which is which we haven't seen anything of, by the way. We've they've just had the the side note that we're going to be able to specialize in stuff. So who the fuck knows how that's going to work? But when we've already got some way of investing into like how your progression grows, I just don't think we need this additional layer on top. I um, agree. Like, what does it get? Well, what does it bring us? Well, historically, like the solution that they've had that was better, at least in my opinion, is that. You do still have the ranks, but when you rank up, it's not that the item gets better, it's that it becomes cheaper to make. More efficient. Yes. Like you, you, yeah. you don't take as many things to make it. Which is fine. That's yeah, way that's fine. way more palatable than the uh, I need to grind all the way up the rank to make the one that people do really care about. Yeah, the yeah. one that... Because if you're going to spend your money, why would you spend 18k to get the rank 2 when you can spend 20,000 gold to get the rank 3? Like, you would just... Right, like... Whatever the item is, the, the difference between yeah. the two ranks is probably minimal enough that there will only be a market for the highest rank of, of whatever it is. Um, so and, and like and it's hard because like back in the day, right, whenever this was and my only recent example, of this is when I played TBC Classic recently and you could get like really damn good items from professions. And like some of it yeah. was like best in slot for the first couple like raid tiers. I think that's fine. Um I'm a little worried that like too many of it will become good. Like yes. I'm okay with like if they're like a handful of slots, like maybe a ring and like you gloves, for example, or something. I don't want to be like fully crafted out into in the profession gear. Yeah. Um so hopefully they can find a good mix. It's like BOEs, right? Like having a couple of BOEs in a tier is fine. If you could get full gear from BOEs, that gets yeah. yuck real quick. One of the things that would be nice on that particularly is weapons. Because it's the one thing that's been missing all expansion, particularly for us. I think they said they are adding like, like armor smithing and weapon, like the, yeah. those same blacksmithing enhancements, right? Yeah, I mean, I also think there's a lot of cool space to lock it with raiding as well, because yeah, they said like, you able to get a BOP regent that you can then have someone else use to make something BOP for you. Well, funnily enough, like you, you robbed TBC, that was one of the ones where they they actually did that very yep. successfully. Yeah, but like each raid tier had its own specific region that you could only get from the raid, but you could turn that into stuff that other people could use, and that was great because that means that once they've got their things, they can start selling it to other people as well. Yeah, and there was also like I did somewhat like the idea or the somewhat little mini game of like, okay, well 
your your like shadow weave trainer whatever it was will give you two recipes if you want this other one it's on a rep vendor right go get your rep up or this other one drops from the raid or whatever you know i did i didn't mind that as like a little like a mini game so to speak of like somewhat gating where those things come from um oh, sure it could also make reputations feel a bit better i know they're kind of changing how we're like leveling up reputations in dragon fight if you guys didn't see oh. They made it, they made some note that like instead of having the typical like honored to exalted whatever it was only some reputations yeah That's some the, of them the main reputations for each zone we'll, yeah we'll have the like renown. this the renown bar but for reputations yeah. instead so like at renown x right they could give you like new profession I don't know yeah um, I think it's I think that change is also really good for the record because I think renown is largely just better reputation. I'm so. I, I'm optimistic. I don't really have any like strong feelings about it. I mean, I guess we'll see. Um, I, I I would like for reputations to be a bit more meaningful because right now they kind of feel like a waste of my time. Yeah, um, like the only reputation I care about is the reputation that gives me double legendary or the reputation that gives me um, yeah. my it's, it's firmly room. firmly depends on which iteration of Renown we're talking. Like if we're talking the the current one right now, it is just a better reputation because it's effectively just rep but with back-end catch-up for the people who fall behind on it whereas if you're talking the original one it's just time kept the time gated do the rep grind i'll do the renown thing and hopefully you keep up if not if you fall behind well that's your problem do your things next week and that's uh, sure, a yes. not and good version yes yes you need to be able to like if you fall behind you need to be able to catch up within like a reasonable amount of time as opposed to like that just being perfectly behind. Because it means that, you know, it stops people DJ no lifing. I agree. Time gating someone yeah. is fine. No, it's when I, that I'm time gating the... doesn't come with like the, the tail yeah, end catch up. Well, yeah. You, you, yeah. you can't speed past, but if yes. you fall behind, you can drag yourself back up within yeah, sure. a very reasonable, like sped up time frame. So you don't feel like, oh, I, I missed the week. So that means that I'm never going to get it in the same time that everyone else does. Yeah. But, so but it I'm depends on about what's at the end of the tunnel, right? Is it a profession yep. recipe that you don't care about, right? Is it a mount that maybe you care about? Is it, uh, oh, 10% of your player's power is, a, is in the rep, right? Like, I think that's also a fundamental flaw that, like, with the renown or reputation catch up, whatever you want to say, like, it, we only care so much about it because they've attached so much player power to reps yeah. this patch, right? Um, which I think was a massive mistake. So, like, I don't know. That's like, I mean, there's been at least one case this expansion where uh, reputation has proven to be pretty toxic, actually. And that's the one that unlocks shade stones. Yeah. That's, oh, that's sure. what I mean. Like, it, you know, they, if the rewards for the rep are like, mostly cosmetic or maybe there's like oh you can buy you know this trinket or like a pair of bracers or whatever that's like equivalent to normal raid gear whatever it is right and you can get it pretty early you know that's fine right um but if it's like ability to craft cauldrons or you know like really important stuff then it becomes less fine i think well like when you when you put profession things on the tail end of these reputations it means that the people who do no life, never miss anything. They get that they they hardcore control and monopolize the market for like the whole period where all the people who are a bit more casual, they'll like add a bit more to the market. They're just they're behind and they don't catch up. And then when they do get there, everything they make is worthless anyway because the market's already been drained because everyone sold all the stuff. Yep, and that's kind of a bit miserable. I'd, I'd like I'd hope that these these reputations have things at the tail end that are also more universal kind of things like your dragon riding is cooler right? you you get more stuff for that in these zones you, you know not just like specifically mounts just outworld game features like the consoles in Zerath Mortis that kind of stuff would be really cool to get from doing the renown rep things yep uh, to go back to Legion on that one, Legion had like every single rank up up to like rank two for every profession. It actually took you into the world as well, rather than having a reputation log or renowned log or anything like that. That could be an option as well. Like actually send you doing stuff. Sure. 
Yeah, yeah. like professional yeah. quest lines as well that they had in BFA were fun. Yeah, so might might happen like just because of their philosophy with the the new zones and stuff. They really want to go back to that map arrow and just explore. That might just happen with professions mm-hmm. too. I feel, but not with archaeology. No, no, no. Oh, let's not even go no, with that. Man, like, uh, you go into the Shadowlands and it's the hi- the history of the brokers and you keep hearing about it in books outside yeah. of the game. And you're like, you could have put all this content in the game, finding it, archaeology would have been worth it. And you're like, excuse me, what? <laughs> and then you go to the, the Dragonflight expansion, which is all about the dragons. Mm. And you have tens of thousands of years of stuff to the point that you see a, an old... Uh, Stone Warden in the cinematic, but no archaeology. I mean, they they know that archaeology has failed, right? Like, they invested time into it in Legion. Very few people still interacted with the system. Yeah. They they clearly know it's dead. Yeah. Yeah. And and they they know investing, it needs a rework, and they don't have time for it, I guess. Archaeology (laughs) failed, aside from the very first patch it was in, and that was because of the two-handed strength sword. That was one of the best swords you could get oh, at that yeah. time. No, I don't. I don't agree. I don't agree that that's the only reason it didn't fail. It didn't fail because it was new. It's, it's just new and shiny. It, it, yeah. If it's new, that's something yeah. that people go and that will go and do. All, all of the other things they thought it was cool. There was mounts. There was, you know, people would read the things. It was a cool new thing to go and do in your downtime because yep. if it wasn't grinding dungeons at Cataclysm launch, there wasn't anything else to do really. So. Yep. But um, well, once uh, once that veneer goes away, yeah. a lot of people realized it was kind of boring. Yeah, it was also crippled by insane amounts of player travel time. Like oh. you get a dig site in the southern eastern kingdoms, and then you get a new one in the plague lands, and you're like, "I'm not traveling 15 minutes for this shit." <laughs> I think it's fine the, to abandon engagement. For a bit. Yeah, especially in favor of like talent trees, which like obviously yeah. we yeah. know. They're going to have so many devs working on these, right? Like, there's a yep. lot of work there. I, yeah, for sure. Scrap archaeology. I want a better talent tree. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, whatever. There, there are ways they could actually bring back archaeology in some way. Like, I really like the reduced version that we had in Legion, for instance, where every week you had a quest. Yeah, sure. Like, you had just one quest. It took you to one zone, and you learned a bit about the history of whatever. Like, to me, that's a much better format than the original archaeology. Simply because it's something, you can do it. It's completely optional if you do it or not. Well, aside from that one time when they fucked up and they put a, gi- a gigantic amount of player power onto one of the quests. But, yeah, I mean, as, like, aside does. from that, it's it's a good format and it allows you to put lore dumps into the game that currently are found in books. Yeah. I, I think, honestly, this would be one of the expansions where... It would have because it's been missing for now two expansions, right? Or, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it would Bit be a good idea to, to do it now, and they can drop all of this dragonflight stuff in. That would be a good idea, um, but do it in a legion way, and then shelf it for another, yeah, expansion or two. Just bring it back every so often. It doesn't always need to be there, but this yep. would if they're doing a profession overhaul, stand like maybe the best time to do it, which is a shame that they missed that. Right. I, I mean, I think it's I think it's literally that they have devs that work on a shared space. Like, I don't think they have necessarily like, oh, this dev owns archaeology. I think they just work on systems. And I, I legit think all of their system guys are on this talent tree because this expansion will live and die on if this talent tree is successful, like 100%. Are oh, we talking about talent trees again? All right, Pantheon, this is your go, yeah, go, go, go. We're back around. <laughs> oh, going back around. We're going yeah, back let's, around. Let's whip one. Straight back. Right. Sorry. The super toxic solution that I have for <laughs> talents when you're in a group and people don't have the right talents, you can already call okay. with the in game API to see what talents people have. They don't have the right ones, you can call them out with a week you or can right now. Yeah, if, there's if, if no you suggest party. this, if you suggest this, they are going to break this API. Oh, no, you already can Uh-oh. because you can tell what covenants people are and what, what soul binds they have and everything. Yeah, you can That's right now with the API. Oh, no, no, what no, I'm no. saying is. But when you suggest this, they're Hold going up. to break the API. Hold up, there is no API in the game that allows you to figure out what Covenant a player is. Yeah, you can only listen right. to certain spells being cast. Yeah, but like talents, like you can just, with the default UI, you can right-click, inspect, and see. With the current yeah. system, there is no guarantee that this will stay. We, I, yeah, I think we you'll assume be able to inspect we'll talents. There. I mean, they, I they said it's... that you can like import and export builds and stuff. I feel like if well, they're going actually, that far, you can probably see it. Actually, in the Ion thing with with Asmund Gold, he yeah, seemed they said maybe to not. say maybe not. Which well, is I think they said concerning. they don't know if they have time to do it. 
Yes, which is a bit concerning. For and because add ons will be created for it, and then we'll put it in all of our yeah. guides. This is your Mythic Plus build. Yeah. This is your build for yeah. this boss. And it will See, just be all labeled, wow, if hey, it, if here, it's one the boss one. If it's baseline in the game, then it's going to pose a real, real problem for just about every casual player, actually. Because See, imagine no, having to put in 61 points over and over and over again. The uh, the thing with all of it is, and this is going to sound a little bit inflammatory to the to the dev who was talking about it Ooh. on the stream, but like the goal of the whole tree is noble. The whole, you know, it's a bit flexible. You can pick a wacky talent and give it in there and give it a try. Maybe it's good. But at the end of the day, there's a reason that no one was picking the bad talents on live. It lives. It doesn't just live or die on the talent system working. It lives on di and dies on whether or not the talents that you put in there and make those choices actually compelling choices. Because the choices are going to be the exact same as the live ones. However, it's structured. There's going to be bad talents. Talent. There's going to be good talents. And there's going to be stinkers. Yeah. And there's going to be winners. Well, it's the opportunity how many cost. spare points you have, right? Like it, once yeah. you've got all yeah. your good shit. Yeah. If you've got like five spare points, it's just like yeah, you can go this way, this way, or this way. That's the customization. It's not the entire tree. It's just a few points left over. Yep. Realistically, yeah. But, but there's at, one at thing. That point, then a lot of it seems, if you boil it down in that way, it's very superficial in like relative to the current talent tree, right? If if you've got the locked in ones that are always going to get picked, and then you have five like doubling points that you could maybe put in there. If you look at a live tree right now, you've got like your four rows that your damage ones, and everyone picks the same thing because they're the best ones. And then you've yeah. got your utility rolls, ro rows where you pick two or three weird talents that might work here or there. That's just the same as this tree, except it's got a lot yeah. less nodes. You're describing well, it positive to me, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, like I, I think in, in my mind, success for this system is going to be, okay, there are like, you have maybe three, like probably the same amount of choices you have now in terms of damage options. So like right now you have like, what is it? Six, seven options for damage at most so if we have four or five choices that we can slightly alter how our damage works with talents that's great and then if we get like 10 choices that are like utility that's great like that's that's, that's what i'm that's, looking that's for cool. yeah um and, and, well, and it's, it's just going to be around you know what are you giving up to pick something else um yeah, and i think I, I, with the way they've laid it out i think it can be good if they can do this kind of like okay well you have your generic uh, class talent side and you have your spec side right and they can kind of put more most of your character's power in the spec side of the tree and then you can leave your entire base tree for like utility stuff the, on that the, one the, the, the point hope... is the point i was i was making is more so that uh like as much as it looks like it's reinventing the wheel of creating this whole new talent tree and everything they it's way way more important that they actually still create the compelling choices in the towns just like live that, sure. that that whatever they like dress it as that still is the same concern as live had mm, yeah all right mandel you wanted to say something mandel hit us yeah i kind of wanted to touch on something else as well because the way that designing the entire talent tree is something that is kind of a solved problem when it comes to gaming and one of the things that uh, grinding gear games have struggled the most on Path of Exile. So for those who don't know, they spent six years basically refining the skill tree in Path of Exile, which looks very similar to the, the kind of tree that we're going to get. And they've learned a lot of very hard lessons when doing this. And I really hope that the, the WoW devs will actually look at the lessons, as in look at the takeaways from GDG and just figure out how to design one of these trees like optimally. Because when like I'm with public, I'm with word up on that one. Whether it lives or dies depends on just where the talents are and how impactful they are. And honestly, they're not get, they they won't get it right. You know? But, like but they they know that, you know? Like yeah. one thing that's been clear to me, it's at least stood out for me from all the interviews that they've done. And I think Ian said it like three times. He's like, I want you guys to get these talent trees ASAP, like even before alpha. And I want yep. your feedback on them like yesterday. Because yeah. I think he, everyone that has a brain at Blizzard knows that this system has huge massive potential, good or bad for the expansion. And so if they come into it with that attitude of like, okay, we really just need to wait and see community feedback on a spec by spec basis. 
and really like let the player base help us make these. And, and if they do that and they listen to it and they can iterate on that enough, then I think we're in good shape. Like that's that's yeah. honestly the recipe for success. Like if they if we just get something at the last minute, two weeks before the expansion launches with the <laughs> final implementation, like Azerite Armor was or whatever else, you know, <laughs> they they shove in last minute, you know, it's gonna be shit. Why? To kind of win this, get they, they win this. The way that they win it is that they they cut all of the chaff, all of the talents that they've had that have not worked, and they just just dig all the way back. You've got years and years of stuff that you can pull into this talent tree. Just do that and make the choices something where like someone go, actually sits down and goes, "Do I really need this or do I want this? Is this good?" Rather than like having situations like, "Do I want primal wrath or scent of blood?" Is that really a choice? No, it's not a choice. It like because one of them actually does something and the other one is useless. And that's what happens on current trees. All of these dead ones, frankly, they're failed design. They've proven they're failed design. Get rid of them and drag in and then make choices where someone has to make a choice. Yeah. Yep. Uh, to, and it's on say, us, right? Like the community people like us, you know, need to help, you know, giving feedback on this stuff, oh, right? Sure. Like, and I'm not saying everyone should do this, but like, I'm very enthusiastic about this. And so, like, me and a bunch of other guys, have a five page doc of like talents we don't want to see talents we want to see return and then new new ones we want to see come back um i'm posting that doc as soon as the talent tree gets released right like you know and and i think we have a lot of power here as as a community to really influence what we see so we'll see uh, to, the, to the point that you guys sent <clears throat> mostly uh what ward mentioned as well and this is what I got from, I think it might have been the interview with Hazel Lowe that Ian said, the way that the talent is going to work, uh, if I understood correctly, is that it's going to reward uh, a, a point every level. One uh, one level is going to be a class talent, one or class point yeah. one is going to be a spec point. And a lot of the classes, a lot of the classes bulk right now in terms of abilities is going to be baked into the talent tree. AKA yeah. you're going to level to seven and unlock Frost Nova or whatever, whatever that's going to be. So this kind of automatically uh, inferred to me that they're more or less reworking the classes because if you're going to have to choose between, you know, as, as a very poor example, icy veins or water elemental, that kind of changes the spec a little bit, yeah, depending, depending on how they put the nodes, which, again, it kind of implies that they're reworking most of the specs. They didn't say it. Maybe they don't want it. But in order for the specs not to be reworked, and if they're taking like baseline stuff that's not talent, putting into the talents where you have choices, that means if I have to choose between Arcane Explosion or Flame Strike, then obviously the spec is going to be different and that kind of flips it all up on its head. So I don't know if, if this is something that they want to test. I don't know what you guys think. And if this is something that they do, this is like way bigger than just putting in talents. If they're like yeah. reworking entire and obviously it, it's going to be way bigger. Yeah, because well, I'm I'm only always thinking about stuff like uh, Frost DK, who has kind of been the same spec for years, and it, uh, Frost DK is one of the specs that really needs stuff like this. Like I don't know about other specs, uh, to the extent that Frost DK needs this, but I feel like uh, if this is true, then it makes sense what Ian said that you know let's bring talents way quicker in, because it kind of sounds like. <laughs> What kind of specs do you want to play in uh, in Dragonflight? So I don't know if, why you guys think if this is something that we're gonna get, and maybe this can actually, you know, change. I mean, feels like it's gonna change the whole game. They've already sort of hinted at the fact as well that the like the class tree will have some core abilities that will allow you to basically hybridize kind of yes. the the spec that you're picking, and like that's something that I'm extremely hopeful for. So uh, for those who don't know, I've had a bit of a, a fun little side project with a couple of other uh, washed up blood DKs. We're going to do, try to do at least Keystone Master on speckless characters. And it sounds fun until you realize just how much everything has been gutted out of the classes and into the, the different specs. And I'm really hoping that the system will actually revert this trend and also allow people to pick things that they would not be able to pick today. Like also imagine the level spec list sounds like hell to me. <laughs> the the leveling is actually okay. Like I mean, okay, I'm 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 doing it on the warlock, and literally all I have is corruption and shadow bolt, and I've had those since level three. So you know, but I think that the point, and we've talked about this before, actually, of like there are a lot of specs in the game that don't stand on themselves without yes. borrowed power, without yeah. certain talents being selected, right? And I think uh -huh. to to your point, like. Yeah, if they want to get this talent system right, they need to make sure that 
and like what it's like an exercise right you should go through the current what talents are currently available for a spec what borrowed power is currently available to the spec and ask yourself a question what should come back as a talent what should come back as a baseline part of the spec and what is like a choice we want to put in the middle of the tree the end of the tree or kind of like a yep. guaranteed something you, everyone will get at the top of their tree right um to really yep. make specs feel i don't want to say full but more complete at you know w- without selecting certain talents um yep. And I, I don't the real think challenge. need to be competitive as well. Like I'm think, thinking of the example of Death Coil, for instance, for DK, which was brought baseline and nobody fucking uses it because yeah. I think to an extent they do need to actually do some canvassing of just the general player base, not just us who like talking the theory. Like ask them genuinely what what things went that went away over the years or that is here now. Do you genuinely miss or do you legitimately really enjoy pressing because of what it does? Not like because of how it's tuned or how much damage, just because of how it functions. And that's not just like uh, big explosive active abilities. It's also like the passives that are going to fill the tree. Like, would it be good to have a passive that like slightly increases your dot damage for certain specs? Like Feral is a really good example to have different parts of the tree maybe one increases your bleeds whereas the other one goes down and it increases your builders and that's like a really good filler talent to go to the actives for maybe. different people and that goes for everything like they need to it, instead of focusing entirely on the explosive big octagon this is the button that i get and it's really awesome fillers are just as important on this tree now i mean i somewhat disagree i think that if you end up splitting the tree in half essentially and you have those halves leading towards like different play styles, like choose your fairy example, one side's bleeds and one side's generator. I think that is that would be bad for the tree. Because I think what just ends up happening there is whichever ends up tuning high tune highest, you just only go down that side of the tree. Would yeah, I, I think I, I, legendaries I would... work like a, a potential contender on this? Like I, things C O L D or things like that. I, I disagree when you say that the, you go down that tree because those excess points that you have what happens if that's the most compelling thing to do? Like you, you then have your excess points and you drop them into the bleeds on the side. The the things that are like, I'd say explosive things like legendaries. I would consider the like capstone passives. They're a one point thing and they're really good. You'd want them to be in there, but they're not like the multi point five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent more X Y Z damage kind of thing. But those are still important. I, I guess like I. I think I disagree, but I'd like to see it play out in the sense that I've never really liked those where it's just like, okay, your dots now do more damage because I think the majority of the specs in the game don't have those choices. Like as a shadow priest, you can't not choose to have dot damage, right? Um, and they're, you know, same thing like balanced through. It's like, I'm, we're kind of in that era of like dots don't matter anymore, but I would rather the dots just be tuned well to begin with. And I think giving like, I want to say boring points into the tree, I think would be not my ideal scenario from the get go. Cause I think you, you can do exciting things with passive things as even ones that have multiple points. Um, and there are some legendary effects that yes, currently in their effect are capstone traits, but you could, I think some of them, you could rework them to being like passive traits that have multiple ranks, um, depending on how you did it. Yeah. I, I guess like those feel more exciting to me than just like, I don't want to like artifact tree my way or the classic style of talent trees where it's just like, yeah, you're going to look this up and you're going to press this button three times because we told you to. Um, I, Cause I don't think there's that many like defined quote unquote builds that exist for specs um, in the way that they play today without reworking a, a lot of them. That doesn't say some of them might have that. I don't know. Like maybe your example with Feral makes sense. I don't, I don't know much about Feral, but I, I don't, I don't think the majority of specs have like meaningful choices like that anymore between builds but i guess this could give us that but to your to your point uh because you used the i was just thinking of the shadow priest example and uh, what word up said what do you guys think if they could make it a choice between burst damage and sustained damage or in shadow priests and maybe feral's case as well um you have like five points you can spend them in five extra dot damage or five extra i don't know devouring plague for instance as an example where you can take away that uh, you can choose between damage profiles 
maybe because this has been maybe some issues with specs like for instance havoc who doesn't really have a burst damage profile and maybe for this it's kind of seen weirdly in raids and if would would that be a realistic I, scenario I, mean, I think realistically a talent can't and shouldn't swing a specs niche that much right yes like i don't think you'll ever be able to design a successful talent system that could take one spec and be like okay you have a lot of burst okay now you have a lot of sustain right just from the swing of a talent that sounds a little too unhealthy for me in terms of like a balancing bit um well i i think you you're going like way far in, in the one direction it shouldn't be one talent does that i, I agree with that but if I, I think even talents just 20 in, talents but multiple I, talents in combination swinging a, a profile if that's a desirable one i think that kind of decision being open very difficult to pull off uh, they, they very rarely done it but when they do that's like the pinnacle of what the talent tree can actually do that's the best iteration of it it's just asking a lot for them from them to do that for everyone uh, yeah i think it's probably straying close to impossible to do properly but it because but it's, the, it's the case of if we think of the the actual ideal mean like if they actually hit that that would be like a knock out of the park 10 out of 10 so my best system they've ever made kind of thing sure if they manage to do it but my envisionment of what happens here is because fun fundamentally you can't reasonably tune burst and sustain to be equal to each other because burst will always be more valuable so what I envision happening, or what I think is highly likely would happen in that scenario, is if you tune those properly, first inherently has to be worse overall than sustained does, which just results, but burst ends up being functionally better for the raid, which I think just results in uh, the large, the masses, seeing that burst should be better, but it does lower numbers. But that's only for one part huge... of the game. I, I think that, that that is slightly warped specifically by the experience from Shadowlands, where uh, Shadowlands had burst versus sustained options on a lot of classes, but you didn't have a choice to swap between them ever. It was you pick one and you have that for the long the long term, and you have to wait to swap covenants. Once they had the covenant swapping and. I think that is that a bit, but it's not going to change the the mindset that people have of what that comparison was at the beginning of the expansion, and that poisoned the well of like what they consider burst versus sustained. Because if something's five percent behind for burst, but they can't ever swap away from it, then five percent I'll take that hit to be better at most things. But if it's five percent behind and I could just swap and be five percent better on a sustained fight. Yeah, and I think that's, that's fine. Like, I, and, and I think they can do that. They just need to simplify, I think, what you were saying a bit. Like, give every yeah. spec an option to spec single target, right? Like, right out the bat, like, everyone should have, here's your single target. Like, this is how we're going to balance your single target, right? And then every spec should get one clear option, right? Like, Shadow Priest has picked these talents to do spread, spread damage, whatever it is. And they can kind of balance around, like, two play styles, I think, could work. But... Yeah, I don't, I don't like envision them having, you know, four or five divergent builds that can do everything and anything at any time that are crazy or anything. But like a little bit of texture in how you yeah. approach playing the spec, as an exact, as to take it personally, enhancement has had that in the past. It has it right now. There is distinct play styles depending on what choices you make. They're very different the way you play them. And it's a few choices here and there. It's like three or four between legendaries and talents. And it is, as far as the feedback from most people who like come back to playing it this tier, incredible. They love it. I think it's amazing because that means you're not just playing one spec, you're technically playing two. Yeah, what I don't know, and you know, this we'll all kind of see, right? Everyone loves something when it's good. Um, yes. Right. And and I think builds are fun when you don't look at your damage meter. Right. This is always true. Like people were thinking of awesome builds with Shadow when they got its talent rework coming into Shadowlands, only to find that like mathematically they just suck. And so they weren't they were hardly played at all this expansion. Right. But they were having a lot of people had so much fun with them in beta because they weren't looking at damage. Right. So a lot of this, I think, does come down to balancing. And I guess like my gut would be go with something simple that you can like easily balance around with some like clear options that people can build with. Um, but 
that's pretty cynical. So. You, yeah, you, they, they pick two diverging directions, and that's it. Like, this is the build that is really good at this, and it, all of these things are for this, and all of the other ones are for that. And, you know, they converge a little, but pick one. And you you yeah. then you give that up to the players, and they dabble a little bit here or there. They give their own flavor, but yeah, I just think they need to have be more like, defined than burst versus sustain. Like I feel like yeah, I, burst I, I, versus I think, sustain, I feel like is too. I don't know. I don't think it's specific enough. I think that's more of a trap, like burst versus sustain thing. It's more like you know, is this is this the one that's more AOE oriented? Is this the one that's more single oriented? Is this sure? The one that does spread cleave instead of mass AOE, like those kind of differentiations mm -hmm, yeah. are better because burst and single. It, it, oh, we all know like how poisonous that eventually becomes. Yeah. And well, like, happens. and that also limits got... raid design. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Burst is burst is warping raid design to a monumental amount. But like the choice we got shown already, uh, like incarn versus convoke. That's that's a pretty interesting choice because at the end of the day, it's burst versus burst. But it's three minute burst versus two minute burst or one minute burst. I don't know. These days I play Incarn and it's balanced through it. I feel like Incarn's up 90% of the time. I don't know what's happening. Oh, fucking, it's fucking yeah. wild. <laughs> it is wild as balanced right now. But, uh, but, but yeah. I think that that's, that's the point they were making earlier is that like these talent trees live and die on the base spec. So, like, you know, if that's yes. how the base spec operates, yeah. then the, the choice becomes warped. So, all right. Well, um, I guess this is a good time to have a natural uh, segue into <laughs> so natural, <laughs> right? into uh, the so-called Season 4. This is not Dragonfly necessarily, but I do want to point out that uh, somewhere, I don't know, January? Or was it December? We talked about a possible uh, solution they could have for the Mythic Plus season, bringing yeah. back old dungeons. Something, 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 Season 4. Something, Dragon... something we called it in the end, <laughs> is what you're trying to say. <laughs> but I really, really want to get you guys take on this, this whole 9.2.5 thing. And season four for Shadowlands, and what what do you guys think? And it's dope. It's it's a it's an obvious solution to long content droughts towards the end of an expansion with reduced efforts required from Blizzards. Like it keeps players satisfied. Um, I'm probably more excited for the M plus part than going back and doing fucking Castle Nathria. But uh, I'm really yeah. worried about the raid stuff. Like I, the, I the think reason the being, stuff is fixable, yeah. but yeah, 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 like, yeah it's implementation, implementation really, really. It bad. depends on tuning yeah. heavily as well. I'm fucking uh, terrified. I hate all it, of it. It's so. not just that. Like, imagine you're a guild you formed in Sepulchre because Sepulchre was nice, and you had all your players. Suddenly, you have exactly one week to clear Sanctum, and you're like, "Excuse me, yeah. what?" Yeah, that's what no. I mean by tuning, right? Like, if it's, yeah. if it's new it. mythic progress level, then. Nobody's doing it. Nobody's doing a fucking mythic progress level where you can only progress once every three weeks. I have to be honest, the way that I, I viewed it originally when they announced it, when they actually saw that they were going to be doing it week on week on week cycling, I don't think that you fix that with tuning or anything else. I think they need to fundamentally turn around and look at what they're actually putting in there. And I think there's like, to do the naughty thing of just suggesting how they fix it, there's two easy ways to do it. They, they pick four bosses from each raid, and they're like the all-stars. They're the cool bosses that everyone liked, or the ones that they got That's wrong, they and they make them better. And it's one big, long 12-boss run of these 12 bosses that were really cool in each of them. Or they make it so that each week it cycles with a raid finder-style wing of there's three bosses from each of the raids each time. And then when you kill all of them, I, you then I, unlock no, the man. access to the last three. That's too much. I, I Here's... My guild, and I think I speak for a lot of the caliber of like, quote unquote, cutting edge, like barely cutting edge guilds, right? Whatever you want to call me. I don't want to do that. Like, I do not want to pull Sylvanas another hundred times. I yep. literally won't. And and no one does, right? So how do you design something that is a 20 pull re-mythic bot? Like, I, it just doesn't. Well, that's that's why they, I think if you, if you did wings there, that means that, say... Because right now, what will happen is that you know, guild that never did Nathria, they're gonna they're gonna go through on one week and they'll get to five or six bosses, let's say, and then the next time that Nathria rolls around, they they plow through them again, and then hold, they're on a wall on Sludge Fist, but they can't do anything else because there's there's no other bosses to do. If you had wings, then they go well, we've we've got to the hard boss that we can't do, but we could go and do like the three bosses that are up for Sanctum this week. And maybe we could do those. They, they would, those would be easier. It splits it up a bit. And then you lock off the end bosses to 
you can always access them, but you need to have cleared the wings first to get to them. But why? <laughs> yeah, if only just know. to open up options, because the way that it's going to be now is a one week lot and then a three week wait to get back there is really, really unpalatable for the average well, person. It depends. Like if it's similar tuning target to like a new heroic raid, even considering that heroics have been averagely more difficult this this expansion, then it being one week only doesn't doesn't become a huge problem. Yeah, I you're it, it, in a, in a way, but, I, but like, I've already killed these bosses. Like, like I don't. That is what that it, is. Well, uh, yeah, that is the issue. At the same time, right? Like, what would we be doing otherwise? We'd be. Like, I, like not raiding or three day. Right. It's a it's a good way to make it or, relevant. Or which is fine. We can continue to we can continue to do that. But like raids are not repeatable no content. Period. I think that's that's my that's my thing, right? Like, no one does repeatable raids. Like that's not why we're here. You know, like contrary to what some guilds do, right? Like we're here to clear the raid, right? And then you're done. <laughs> I, I <laughs> or, would, or maybe I you would farm mounts, like, right? Farm oh. gear for the next tier. But like that's not what this is. So like, what are we doing it for? I, I kind of fundamentally disagree with that, based on like the amount of people who who say like I, I'd really love them to to do Throne of Thunder again. I'd really love to to bring back ICC and do that with anything. Yeah, much I mean, rates. I, I, I farmed Throne of Thunder for like four months. I farmed ICC for a year. So if the I, the thing is yeah, that like time walking raids people. aren't no one does time walking raids. So I don't know if I believe that. There's there's something else as well. Like fundamentally, no, they, they don't. I, I haven't heard of a that many people today for the current raid tier or even the previous one that actually speak positively about the fight. They speak positively about killing it and being done with it, but they don't speak yeah. positively about the fights. Yeah, uh, I I think there are so, some I of think them. That there are there are definitely some. Like I said, if you did like an all stars of them, I think you could pick out you could pick out two bosses in Nathria and two bosses in Sanctum and two bosses in Sepulchre that are just universally agreed were really good fights. And then you can say SLG, let's go. Well, you like you know you say, and then you pick the other two that missed the mark. So like say in Nathria, Denathrius excellent fight as far as i'm concerned not killing it as a fight really well designed yeah. and, then, yeah. it, and then inerva is a really good example of a boss that missed the mark because no one had to deal with the mechanics you just out dps'd it and but, but i think it. it's but you're not it feels like you're reprogressing a boss you've already killed i don't like no matter what they do to change these bosses whatever these like if they do afix style things <laughs> it's not gonna feel fun like it's gonna feel like guys come on we've killed this already why are we messing up mechanics that we've done six months ago? Yeah. You know? what, what happens and, if these are, and some of these are the mechanics that you never actually interacted with because the fight was just designed? Because as far as I think, yes, Inerva true. was similar to like Raden. You just didn't do half the mechanics because the boss. Yeah. Was it, if, if they like empower a certain mechanic or they add a mechanic to a boss fight that's like only works for that fight, maybe it could be more fun. But from data mining, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure yeah, they've yeah, just added. Just, there are like generic affixes they're adding to bosses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, There's some they, interesting uh, ones with like you have to interrupt and you get a damage buff or you have to break I, the shield or whatever. Like, why why are you punishing me with like crappy affixes <laughs> that make the fight harder for a fight I've already killed? That's not well, what, I, where I'm does not the line do come where it's a new fight? Like do you, if, if you put like a funny hat on the boss, does that is that make it a new fight then? <laughs> like I, I think the difference is different. like the nostalgia factor of season four adding four dungeons from or like these old mega dungeons back is very different than go do a raid you did six months ago i do agree that it being raids from this expansion dulls the dulls the impact quite a lot i'm, okay. I'm interested to see that, how it goes but... that part is completely fair that that, that yeah. i do agree with however i also kind of completely understand why they chose to do it with specifically these ones because this is very yes. clearly an experiment for yes. this is what we're intending to potentially be doing for dragonflight whatever 11 12 13.0 is like this is a building blocks patch to see what works with people like throw everything at the wall what sticks that's what we drag forward yeah um, okay. can we talk about just for one thing regarding that the season in raid 
and talk about the loot, particularly if Sylvanas shows up as a boss. I mean, the, the I, 300 I, eye level Sylvanas stuff? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, the 300 eye level Sylvanas loot daggers that three, you three only 12, have exactly right? one week to get. Oh. Um, I mean, I, I'm like just sitting in a situation whereby it's the end of the expansion. We're not going to have any additional progress or any meaningful content with that gear. I kind of don't care. Like they could give me whatever the fuck I want. It, it doesn't. If the vendors that have been data mined or the implications of the vendors <laughs> is true, then if they show up, I then it's gonna couldn't be great. care less. I'm mm -hmm. super excited about them. <laughs> Using this as a test bed that they could bring forward because if they get the data yeah. and it turns out like because when you speak to a lot of people they go I really didn't like having to go back and farm War old warriors soul it was horrible but then you get this vendor system where suddenly no one's complaining about not getting loot anymore because there's a there's a guarantee that makes them go well everyone liked that why don't we just do it again does the yeah, vendor once you buy stuff or that. just upgrade it. We don't it know. We know there's the upgrade okay. that got data mined, but there's also vendors that we can see on the PTR that haven't been like we, they're purpose them. We don't know they haven't been data mined, but they have like raid related names. Like it's um, there was also it's like fence of the, the first ones as well. That yes, exactly. Items. Yeah, yeah. So we know about that for sure. That's that's in the data mining, but the vendors we don't know what they do yet. But it yeah, seems likely like, based on names that it's some some kind of vendor related to the raids. It, if the raids are there as like. Hey, here's something fun your raid group can do to get out of the monotony. The mon monot whatever, however you say that fucking word, of farming mounts. Yeah, right? you can go do this thing for a bit of fun, right? But like, that's it. You know, maybe that's okay. That's, I guess my my concern is like, like I don't I don't want to go there and farm these old raids to like get better gear for to make Mythic Plus bearable. Whatever that see like, are they gonna make Mythic Plus scaling again? I don't know. Like, I don't, uh, I don't know. It's that's just, what I mean. Yeah. Like this will well, kill it, my guild, right? If if they do this and we have to reprog all this stuff again, like we we will stop raiding. They well, can't, can't head, the progress. The, the alternative be. is is basically what this is there in place of is like a siege of Argrimmar that lasts yeah. for a year and like a, a year and three months or whatever or whatever it did, where you just do it week after week after week and that's all there is because there's nothing else you can do, right? And if you want to do that, that, you can. Is that bad? Well, I don't think there's anything stopping you from just doing that with Sepulchre as it is right now. You sure. can just do that over and over and over and over again if you want, because that'll still just be active, <laughs> but it won't be the Season 4 version. You just do the old one, because it'll still be there. Well, it'll be the Season 4 version of what we can three. Is uh, this when uh, we no, go No, I think that's one the... that you queue for. Uh, the, the way that it looked like, you queue for it. No, that's for the LFR version. If I go in and it's like a four pull on a boss, we get to giggle about how he killed this, now it's like harder... Great. If I have to go in and I have to spend 150 pulls on Sludge Fist, um, I'm gonna regret my actions. Yeah, if I can't clear whatever it is in our week's worth of raid, then I think it's a complete failure. I guess that's my that's my take on it. And I don't know how they accomplish that because I feel like it's Mythic is challenging because some of these bosses do take 100 pulls, right? Some of them do yeah. take 200 pulls, right? And I think that's kind of what makes them interesting. Like, I like we also be like Denathrius Prague, right? Would we have all liked it if it was a ten pole boss? Probably not. <laughs> so I, I guess how do you make something that waffles in that gray area of fun progress of something you've literally killed in the last year? I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think the I enjoyed some of the heroic bosses this year, and that was like 10, 15 poles. Yeah, but it, yeah, yes, for the first time, yes. But now you're going to redo it. So is it fun again? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it depends I'm... how the ethics end up, I guess. Yes. Yeah. This harder. also has the potential of cheapening the memory of the, of the well, for the people who actually progged it the first time around as well. So, Oh, yeah. I'm going to love Sanctum way more after this, for sure. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be real. It's also not going to make, make me hate Sanctum anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it will. Smith, but suddenly the ads pop up and they all have the affix shield. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's my that's my biggest concern. It's like just souring the tape. Like, I don't know. And I guess like my guild likes having the downtime in between expansions to do other things. Um, yeah, I think that's fair. Like, and it, it's, really it's nice to just kind of kill the raids on, on our first raid night for the mounts 
And then you have the rest of the week off to like go play other games, go do more Mythic Plus than you would normally. Which, which, by the way, yeah. I love what they're doing this season for Mythic Plus. I think it's awesome. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. entirely um, positive. So, or like you can spend time doing things in the game. Like I like to do collecting stuff, but I don't get as much time to do it because I'm raiding so much. Um, so I don't know. That's it's also. I, th I think though that's a different strokes though. Th there are also guilds that have the problem of, like, it, uh, me personally, I'm on the side of I love having the downtime of not having to play the game really, <laughs> like at the tail end of the expansion when Alpha's going on and there's all the other stuff going on. Big fan, but uh, there are also guilds where you have people who they get bogged down you have people leave because they're just bored and then you have attrition before the expansion comes out and then it comes out and then suddenly three or four people decide oh no, no. kind of don't want to play i think realistically like i don't know what the fuck my officers are planning but realistically i think the ideal for me is that we'll continue to just do one night a week we'll clear whatever we clear because it's not like we have to gear up for new progress or whatever we're just gonna my plan for my guild at the moment is just going to be to do one maybe two nights to get the portals on everyone and that means we're going to have to do at least two or three cycles of each raid. Which does suck a little bit, but it's something to do. It keeps the team uh, building going, right? Yeah, the, the the team building thing is like a, yes. a, a big thing. like Because I, I don't know how much your guilds experience it, but like when the last tier of an expansion ends, there is usually a few people who decide, okay, I've finished the expansion, the, game, the game's not for me, I'm going to leave. And you need to recruit people. You don't want to go into an expansion fresh where the people who've just joined the guild or that you're playing with, you've never really played with before. You, you want to get them like involved, like in, integrate them into the, the, the gang as, as it would like, you want them to, to have something to do. And if it's something that's at least slightly different to just week on week farm, I, I just think that's just a net positive. Yeah, I think uh, there's a there's a big question mark on uh, bringing old raids because uh, maybe the best uh, point that you guys brought is are we going to progress again? And I think that's a little bit. I don't want really want to use the word toxic, but it doesn't feel like it's going to be the thing. And initially, uh, when the raids were announced, uh, I thought that they might just fully unlock them and just la leave them there to be all the time. Maybe raise their eye level to like heroic sepulcher level and just keep it there, just maybe just for fun. But you guys raised some good points, so I I don't know. Uh, Word up had some really good suggestions, but I think it's down to how they implement it uh, there again. Because I think public made a lot of good points, like why do we do this? This is not repeatable content, and I don't know if they could do it repeatable. Like, are they gonna do a Mythic Plus style where you just have a couple of bosses and then you clear it and you get like the the re inverse uh, LFR buff, what is it, the termination or whatever it is, and you buff the <laughs> boss by 5% and see how high you can clear it. Or maybe they could add some cosmetics achievements, mounts that weren't there before if you clear this boss again. But it feels yeah, like... I mean, they've added we, some of it. It's just a question of like, there's, there's one mount, you know. Yeah. You get some new but gear. But the mounts for all on normal. And I, I think, what, to your point, we need to know more about how it's going to work specifically so yes. we can give them feedback hopefully make it work yeah. for all types of people like both what word up is looking for and also what guilds like mine are looking for oh no, I, i'm i'm on the side of I'm, I'm a big fan of downtime but i completely understand that some guilds just <laughs> sir they, they, they just like bleed out in the tail end regarding that though like this downtime is going to be around the time of the alpha as well so yeah. it's it's a good thing to plan content in moderation so that people actually have time to test. I mean, the number of times, how many times this expansion have we had like uh, PTR testing or raid testing while the actual raid was still going on on live? Yeah, yeah almost every time. I agree. And, like the, the majority of people who are testing, the alpha starts uh, maybe a month after the raid is first cleared and the overwhelming majority of people are still doing that. So they, they just don't yeah. do early testing. And by the time they start doing it, Except like extensively, they it's too far gone. There's not much that they can yep. do about it anymore. So like, and that's my main worry for that season four raid stuff is if it becomes too involved in time, it's actually going to have a detrimental effect. It needs to be something that's cheerful, fun, basically. I yep. think that's generally what it's going to end up being treated as. From my limited conversations with people in like. The super high-end guilds, they're already on the thing of, well, we'll do it 
for fun and everything, but we're not going to do like a world first event or anything. And yeah. it's not going to be like something that we care that much about, but we'll do it because well, what else are we going to do? I think the biggest takeaway is maybe see what we can do now with the tier sets and old raids because it has to be a fun fun spin to it or whatever affixes they designed. I think uh, the only interesting part that I can see in doing all of these raids since we've already done them is, I don't know, take my Pro Warrior tier set and see if I can solo tank uh, Sledge Fist or whatever. Like some, some weird stuff like that. Uh, otherwise, it can be a big hit and miss, but I think like uh, what you guys mentioned, the biggest thing is we just don't know enough about it. Maybe this can be a little bit naive, uh, raise awareness on uh, the things like, hey guys, this can be cool, but we don't know enough about it. It's like can, it can be a big hit or miss. But I think if this wins, it opens up a much much easier to maintain healthy content cycle and expansion because Shadowlands had long downtimes between raids. What happens if, say, this works out? It, it was it was fun for a laugh as like a mid thing, and then they go, "Well, it's going to be another eight months until we release the next raid." So instead of doing a mini raid that will take time out, like Crucible, and people won't engage with, what happens if we, I don't know, re redesign or, or like slap an affix on uh, Bastion of Twilight? And you can go and do that. And it's like an interim raid yeah. that people just go and do in the yeah. downtime. That's, that's and they've what got I a, think. A huge backlog of raids that they can pull forward. Exactly. And then fill that time. And then you suddenly stop having Reddit posts where people go, it's been 200 days since the last patch and we've had nothing to do and so on. Like once that goes away, yeah. I think everyone just becomes happier. Yeah, like as you said, it uh, word up. This is testing grounds for future content. And I think this is exactly the purpose they want to 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 aim for. Like in long content content droughts, just start molding up older raids and bringing them back in whenever it does. Like they they know that it's going to be a, a long development cycle for whatever wherever. This is, I think, for the future, a good thing. Uh, regardless yeah. if you want to do it or not or whatever. Obviously, the Mythic plus thing is really really cool. Raid has indeed a lot of discussion, but I don't think they're ready to bring in or to test out, you know, specific, just bring in. I think the idea is cool, but I don't know if, if they, they have the, the resources now to just develop something like have like the best two bosses out of each wing and make them like that. But I do believe their purpose will be to eventually bring on some, you know, maybe some fights from one Taurus or something like that. Cool shit that you forgot about for sure. I mean, I'm sure not all not all of us still remember every little bits and things that you didn't throw of thunder or whatever. That could be an interesting thing to be to be uh, brought into the game in the future. You know, obviously tweaked and tuned or whatever. But it feels in a way like a better version of the time walking raids because those have been a gigantic yeah. flop. Yeah, and yeah. Think like they're they're going at it with a better idea because like the main downside of time walking raids is the gear is wing. It requires you to assemble people. The difficulty is lame. And yep. like eventually you have no reason to go there. Unless the tr one of the trinkets is particularly busted. Like the one that was on Yogg-Saron, I think. The uh, AP trinket or whatever. It it. So like the way they're doing this feels like it's a much healthier way forward. And if they can do this like properly, they could even bring back really old stuff like that. Yeah. Well, well if you can you can look at the the fact that they're bringing these WAD dungeons in for season four for, for Mythic Plus, which and especially that they asked people which ones do you want us to put time into was a really good touch as well. Yep, that's obviously an evolution of. Wow, it turns out that Legion time walking kind of worked, and people did like doing those. Like, that was just you know it was something Guilty different for a week. I lost. I lost the whole. I lost a whole week of my life to doing the, like three dungeons a lot, but it was a it was a distinct change was, yeah, to what I've been doing change. for the last two years. Yeah. And I like I I had more fun doing costs seventy three times over the course of three days than I have had, had doing M plus for like the rest of the expansion. Yeah, yeah, so the question is, how do you make out. it relevant? But if, if you see that step, terrible. you go Legion to bring Wad for season four. So it's no longer time gated. It's now like part of the season. To yeah. like, and, and then you can extend that to maybe we could do this for raids as well because that's the same timeline that time walking went with. So you can actually start looking at how much old content they can mine from 
to just give people something different yeah. to do each day, each week. Yeah, and again, I think it's the best possible solution they could have ever come up with if for long uh, content job periods. This is this is the thing. We, we if they do it properly, yes, for sure. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's 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 all about putting it in players' hands to see how they react to it straight away instead of giving it to them and telling them they <laughs> should do this and they should like it. Yeah, because that's all there is. Then and that's such a shift in design philosophy that they're doing here. It's almost weird. I, <laughs> Just I, I, like it's it's a massive like compliment to it. To it, I think it's a really good idea. Yep, yep. It's yeah, looking sure. looking good. Looking for good. sure. I mean, you know, uh, public did mention that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all, all of us kind of mentioned that there's a lot of worries in regarding a lot of things that are to come. But listen, it's kind of warranted at this point because we have been through two expansions now, where some of it was promising, somewhat so not not really that much. But what was promising turned out to be bullshit. And you know, everybody's you like, "Thank you do, but you don't." Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm getting good vibes from talking to people. Yeah. At least. Every time I've talked to someone, I, they've said the right thing. But like in past expansions, like I've talked to somebody and then I've gone away to a little private Discord and be like, fuck, I'm so annoyed at this thing they said. It's so fucking stupid. Yeah. They announced Whereas Covenant now it's like, day one of Shadowlands and we were all like, exactly. oh, shit. Yeah. I don't exactly. have that yet. I don't have that yet for Dragonflight. So yeah. There's nothing that's immediately made me go, this looks, I don't want to touch this. <laughs> I, there's, there's nothing that I feel that see, seems immediately obviously something that Bad. they are already too locked into to change yeah. at all which yeah. is where both BFA and Shadowlands ran into the problems where it was like mm, that looks not great but I highly doubt they'd listen to anyone telling them to not do it because it's too late yeah. now. Yeah and I think I think I don't know if public mentioned this but I don't believe in one of the interviews with Ian when he did say that he wants to get the talents uh, really, really fast into places, he I think he mentioned something like even like a fucking talent calculator or something just for you guys to like just see it and how how everything is yeah. di distributed. That is a very, very different Ian has a Costas than what I don't know for I ever known or listened to. I mean, I'm, I'm I was making parallels with the even there was the the Asmogol interview was shorter, but I was making parallels with the uh, preach interview, the famous preach interview, the last one, and this, and dude, if you looked at Ian, he was like memeing and she's smiling, nodding and all of that. It felt like I don't know, PR chains were a little bit more loose. The, the, the whip I, off his back just went away, man. It's, yeah. it, the, I, I think it was legit. He, they were selling systems in Shadowlands they knew weren't gonna be great, or they knew weren't gonna yeah. make everyone happy. But they still had to sell it. But yeah. now it feels like they're selling stuff that they're like actually like a hundred percent are on board with, right? Because they've been, yeah. you know, obviously the dev cycle is you're reacting to things yeah, years yeah. after they happen, right? Um New Blizzard, so yeah, New I'm Blizzard, excited. New Well. Let's go. <laughs> I think it, it it could be that. They were selling stuff that they knew that if people didn't like it, they can't change the, in Shadowlands. Whereas now they're selling stuff that we go, well, people don't like it that much. Well, maybe we could change it a little bit. That's what I got from it. Yeah. Well, it came across like that, for sure. And uh, I feel uh, this is a good, uh, good way to to uh, wrap up the the podcast. You know, like I would say, decent positive note. Fuck it. Oh yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, with all the concerns and everything we talked about here, I, I feel we, we we got some some strong uh, ideas and opinions on everything that is to come. And yeah, there's still a lot more to talk about. And oh, I'm pretty yeah. sure like if we're going to do another one in two weeks, we're going to have even more information out there. Um, but generally, the vibe is good. I mean, the vibe is good within the community. The vibe is good kind of like getting all of the the information out from, from the interviews or whatever. And, you know, the community council. And they're everywhere there's like talk and pulse within WoW right now. It's decently good, at least better than it was for the longest time. So uh, with this said, uh, once again, uh, big pleasure and honor to have uh, Giltias, Public, Mandel, Pentia, and Word Up. Uh, we shall leave in the description if you're uh, listening to this on uh, any of the streaming platforms. You can go on the YouTube and uh, check these boys out. We're going to have links uh, in the description there for, for all of them. Their streams, mm -hmm. their YouTubes, their, you know, the discords where they're at. All, all of that, that stuff, yeah. The good ones. And uh, what else? Well, uh, it's, uh, Should we say it's been a long you? time. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming in. It was a, yeah. was a discussion in a long time coming. We've been trying to get this going for the past couple of weeks. And hopefully we can cover a lot more Dragonflight because uh, it's, it's, it's feels, it feels different. It so. feels, yes, it feels. Yes, it's, it feels. <laughs>
th- thank you for watching or listening. Thank We shall you. catch you with a brand new episode on next Monday on MoCast. Till then, bye bye. See you next time. I've been loving it then, I still love it now Still, I play wow Still, I play wow Getting better every day, let me show you how Cause still, I play wow Still, I play wow It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day It's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow Still, I play wow Still